Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to Turner Classic Movies. You have joined us on a good night. Our next film, released just last year, is The Automat. Its producer and director, Lisa Hurwitz, joins us. Lisa, welcome. Thanks for having me, and thanks for showing the film on TCM. It's really a perfect fit, I think. It is a perfect fit. There is no way that, uh, that TCM fans are not going to respond to this film. It means so much to so many people. What's The Automat? Well, the automat was a cafeteria where people would put coins in a slot and open up glass windows to take out food. And it was in New York, a Philadelphia institution. In its heyday, it was the largest restaurant chain in America. You were from Southern California, Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington. You could not possibly have ever been to the automat. What piqued your interest? How did you know about it? I was a customer of the greenery, which was the university cafeteria. I loved it in there. And I just started researching cafeteria history in our school library. And in our library, that's where I discovered the automat, which I loved immediately. I became quite obsessed with it. And I was a 35 millimeter projectionist at the time at our town's 1920s movie palace. That's when I decided to combine you know, these two interests of mine, cafeterias and film. When did it become clear to you that this was something that really matters? This was, this was a cultural and socially important part of American history. I took a trip to the New York Public Library during a winter break to go see the Automat collection, which they hold. Seeing those scrapbooks, starting to reach out to the Horn and Hard Art relatives, Horn and Hard Art, uh, they, those, those are, are two family names. Who, they owned it. And in fact, in Philly, it was sort of known as Horn and Hard Art. And in New York, the Automat, but it's the same place. Yes. I was starting to have conversations with these people who eventually were in the movie. And at a certain point, I decided I need to document what I'm doing. Why don't I make a, a film? But I didn't know how to make a film yet. <laughs> so, you know, the making of the film was kind of like film school. So making the film helped enormously because the, the, you have a featured player in the documentary, and it is a person who I've gotten to know. How did you get Mel Brooks to sit down with you and be such a big part of your documentary? A friend of his, Carl Gottlieb, who... Sure, wrote Jaws. Right. Yeah. So Carl was a guest at our theater in Olympia, Washington. I was in charge of driving him around, taking good care of him, and we became Facebook friends. So when I started my Kickstarter campaign to raise money for the documentary, it popped up in Carl's newsfeed on Facebook, and he just sent me a Facebook message saying, I had no idea you were a filmmaker and that you were making this documentary about the Automat, which was such an important place in my life when I lived in New York. I'm having dinner with my friend Mel Brooks tonight. Do you mind if I mention this to him? And you and said, so no, don't bother. <laughs> yeah. I said, please do. And then as soon as the dinner was over, I get a call from... Carl that, you know, Mel couldn't stop talking. I mean, I think this started to dominate the whole rest of the dinner. And then the next thing I know, I'm organizing my travels to Los Angeles to go meet with him and film the interview. And he recruits Carl Reiner. He says, I got to get Carl for you. Mm -hmm. In addition to uh, Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner, uh, Elliot Gould, General Colin Powell, Howard Schultz, chairman of Starbucks, and former Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Okay, before we show the movie, at the end of the film, you're going to uh, hear a song. Um, what's that song? The song is At the Automat. Mm -hmm. it's written, a, written by? Written and performed by Mel Brooks. There was nothing like the coffee at the Automat. This was a request of mine after I had built a little bit of a rapport with him. I wanted an original song for the film. I didn't want to license Let's Have Another Cup of Coffee, the Irving Berlin song, because of the expense. I wanted to have our own original score. And actually, Mel's composer of his last two films, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and Dracula, Dead and Loving It, Hummy Man, he composed the original score for The Automat. It was the first time that Hummy and Mel had worked together since the 90s, and so it was very exciting for both of them. The film's wonderful, the song's wonderful. Congratulations on all its success. Let's take a look at it now, and we'll come back and talk afterwards. Here it is, from 2021, produced and directed by Lisa Hurwitz, The Automat.